Hello, my name is Ryan and today we're going to be talking about can it be harmful to extend the wires within our ESC. Now the short answer is yes it can be harmful to extend wires within our ESC. It does depend on which wires so let's talk about how and why. So I have a speed control with me and as you can imagine power comes from our lithium polymer battery pack that would be plugged in on the input power side of our speed control. Power would then travel down our input wires and then end up at the ESC itself. From there, there's a whole bunch of stuff happening that sends out pulses to the motor. Now, as you can imagine, our motor has a permanent magnet within it. And then it also has coils of wire. These co coils of wire is what the ESC is actually controlling. It turns these coils of wire on and when a permanent magnet pole is interacting with this coil and power is sent to the coil, the motor then rotates away when that magnetic interaction occurs. It rotates a little bit away, a few degrees, and then this process needs to repeat. And that's how our motor ends up rotating 360 degrees. Now you can imagine, you know, you only get a small amount of rotation from this one pulse sent from the speed control to the motor. And the motor spins at thousands of RPM uh, per minute, per second, whatever you, which way you want to look at it. So you can imagine the uh, amount of chaos that actually happens within the speed control, what the speed control is actually doing. It's working thousands of times per second just to control our motor at precisely the correct time. So you can see the speed control sending a whole bunch of pulses to the motor thousands of times a second. What we can do is we can look at something that can happen within the home. Now I want to look at this as like this fictitious example. Um, you may have already had this happen within your home. I'm not suggesting going and doing this in order to see if it does happen within your home. So if you imagine taking one of the faucets that has high volume of water going through it within your home and it's a far distance away from your main water, main water source input to your home. You take that faucet and you turn it on all the way. So you have maximum water coming, maximum volume of water coming into your sink or wherever you might be. Uh, then what you want to do is you, you imagine taking that faucet and shutting it off as quickly as possible. Now what happens is you have that whole bunch of water traveling down the pipes, it's traveling towards that faucet, and then you go ahead and you shut it off, and that now needs to stop. You're, you're dead stopping it right there. So that water is creating a bunch of momentum in the pipe as it's traveling at a certain speed. And as soon as you close that valve off, that water has to stop. It stops right in its position, it has nowhere to go. And all that momentum, you know, this molecule bumps into this molecule and this one bumps into this one and they keep stopping all the way down. Well, what happens is you get this sort of pressure built up of water and that can actually hit, rebound and send a shock wave in the opposite direction of the water flow. That can send a shock wave down the pipe creating either a hammer-like noise where it's just a, a bang or it can create some sort of rattling effect down the pipe where it's and you can hear that sometimes within your own home again I'm not saying go try this this is a harmful thing to do to your plumbing system so don't don't you know run off and say you blew up your housing plumbing you got water all over your basement because this guy on YouTube told you go and and try this out that's not what I'm saying I'm just trying to get you to imagine this sort of effect happening because this is what's happening within our ESC our ESC has power coming from our battery, that power goes to the speed control and then that speed control is turning the power on and off several times a second to get that power to the motor. As it's doing that, it's, it's doing it thousands of times a second and you can imagine that if you were to take this, this is our plumbing line. This is where the momentum is built within the speed control and of course what you do notice on the input side of your speed control is these capacitors. These capacitors are responsible for soaking up all the different voltage spikes that you may see. It's trying to smooth everything out, dampen the load that it sees. Now as you can imagine we talked about the water hammer and how it creates pressure, a water pressure. Pressure in electrical terms it actually refers to voltage. So as this as the voltage of the battery spits out the power into the speed control and you have this sort of effect of slamming on the brakes and, and go, that's what the speed control is doing by switching, you get these voltage spikes that keep happening. And as those voltage spikes happen, this is where it causes these capacitors that I just showed you to work harder. To, to do more work and of course you're loading them further. You may actually load them to the point where they could fail soon if you extend these wires too long. 
So that is how it can be harmful to actually extend wires within your ESC. You don't want to be doing that. There is a solution that we'll talk about in a later video on how you can actually extend wires. There is something you need to do though in order to do that. You can't just go ahead and extend them. Now if you do extend them and you don't care uh, to add any sort of protection for these capacitors, you may get away with it for some time. Again, they're being overworked. They're not necessarily over capacity on day one. It's a sort of a buildup of harm that happens within these capacitors. It may actually work for some time. You don't want to do this if you have an airplane and you re heavily rely on the speed control bringing that airplane back to you because it's worth a lot of money. You may lose it out in the middle of nowhere when it's uh, you know a couple hundred meters out and that's because the speed control dies and the plane just goes in. So we want to make sure that we keep our speed controls nice and reliable and we don't want to do things to it that cause harm. So now if you do need to extend the wires, my recommendation is to not extend the wires on the battery side unless you of course have the right correction for it. What you want to look at is extending the power wires that come from the speed control then go to the motor. These wires you can actually extend. You can extend them to as long as you need them. You may cause interference uh, with these wires. The way that you would be able to correct that if you are having interference issues is actually rotating uh, rotating the wires around so you have this sort of rotational effect happening. This will help cancel out any of the interference that will occur within your, your brushless power wires going to the motor. So that really does it for this video. That's how it can be harmful to blow up your speed control uh, in your RC application by extending the wrong wires or if you do extend the wires within the input side of the speed control and you don't have some sort of correction that could lead to a, a, a paperweight. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to smash that subscribe button if you want to see more content like this. In the next video we'll be showing you how it is possible to extend these wires and what you need to actually add.